Hello dudes and dudettes and welcome to the War Zone. This is Scruffy Tales and I am the one and only Scruffy. And in this video I will be talking a bit about the future of the CV-90s serving in Ukraine and uh, what the, looks to be in store for uh, Ukrainian support when it comes to the CV-90. First off, let's cover briefly the fact that Russia has spread some uh, videos of a CV-90 taking a hit from a drone. A drone strikes a CV-90 uh, where it appears to hit it in the rear, some, well, in the troop compartment, to be honest, as we can uh, tell from the image down below. Uh, not the turret, not at the front where you have the engine and... Uh, uh, stuff like that. It is in the rear in the empty troop compartment and uh, the CV-90 comes to a stop and the crew climbs out after the uh, vehicle has become uh, filled up with smoke would be my guess. So smoke in the vehicle, they can't see, they can't operate it, they have to abandon it. And as the uh, vehicle uh, remains stationary, Another drone strikes it and tries to render it uh, inoperable. This fails because the CV-90 is a kick-ass vehicle and later the Ukrainians can retrieve it and bring it back for repairs. So the CV-90 takes two hits from a drone, uh, top attack hits, uh, three crew survives, no dismounts in the vehicle, so no casualties among the dismounts, and the vehicle uh, can be repaired to fight another day. I mean, show me the BMP that is capable of that. If you just look at a BMP, uh, the fuel will ignite and the entire thing is just uh, burnt to a crisp. But not so with a CV-90 because it is a proper armored vehicle. Right, with that out of the way, uh, yes, Denmark. And Sweden has made a big announcement. Denmark will make a financial contribution of 1.8 billion Danish crowns, Danske Krone, uh, <laughs> roughly 266 million and 400,000 United States dollars. And uh, Sweden will use these funds to not only uh, procure spare parts to the CV 90s already in service in Ukraine, but also. To produce new CV-90s straight from the production line intended for the Ukrainian front line. So a pretty big deal. You already have the Swedish commitment to uh, support Ukraine with the CV-90s. And my dog is making noises in the background. Shut up. I'm trying to make a video. And now you have Denmark uh, stepping up to the plate and providing a ton of cash to help Sweden with this commitment. So the North stands united and it stands united with Ukraine in providing these very uh, impressive combat vehicles that Russia is truly struggling to uh, contend with. I swear German Shepherds are the squeakiest dogs alive. Uh, had to check on her and well, she was just a squeaky German Shepherd. Anyway, Ukraine has requested a factory to be built in Ukraine to build CV-90s on location within Ukraine. And uh, as many as 1,000 vehicles. Uh, but Heglunds, the uh, producer and builder of CV-90s, has declined due to the r risks involved for Swedish technicians and engineers should they travel to an active war zone. So it will more than likely only happen once the war is over or maybe within three or four years, uh, according to some sources. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, however, for those who are interested, Dagens Arbete released an article in August of 2023. Uh, I'll provide the link below. Uh, taking a look at the Heglunds factory itself uh, in Sweden. And uh, for the past two years, Heglunds has doubled its staff. 
and they are still looking for new co-workers. So uh, the demand for Swedish weapons and the vehicles in particular is very high all around the world. So please take a look in the link below and uh, have a read about uh, how things are going over at Heglunds. So as you probably uh, noticed, there's very few combat videos of CV-90s uh, from Ukraine. Basically nothing. I've only see, seen one video where a CV-90 supports an M113 in advancing on Russian positions, but then it doesn't fire anything. It, it's just there to support and there's a uh, Ukrainian T-72 doing all the shooting in that video. And then, of course, you have the uh, Russian video where a CV-90 gets knocked out during the assault. Uh, but that's about it. And the reason is that Sweden has made a request uh, that the donated CV-90s are not used by Ukraine for propaganda purposes. And as a result, we have very few videos involving CV-90s in combat. And uh, the reason is, uh, I suspect that uh, if such videos were to be released, then the Russians could watch them and f gain valuable tactical intel on the uh, vehicles that Sweden would be relying upon. Uh, should Russia try to do some shenanigans in and around Gotland Island? That would be my guess. And most of the few videos and images we do have are of damaged or knocked out CV-90s or of CV-90s used for training or uh, during uh, transport between uh, uh, the front and the rear, the rear lines. And to me, that just shows just how much Ukraine is in control of the information space surrounding this war. If videos are released detailing combat or anything else, literally anything else, it is because Ukraine wants them to, re to be released. Because if Ukraine did not have full control, then soldiers would have uploaded multiple videos of CV-90s in combat by now. And I keep uh, referring to this. Uh, we have a Swedish author, Lars Wildring, uh, who has made a bunch of claims that he has seen videos of CV-90s in action successfully engaging Russian forces. So if we were to believe him, which I do, uh, as a side note, uh, but if we were to believe him, then these videos do exist and they are not released to the public because Ukraine is in control of the information space, of the information flow. So everything and anything that is released detailing the war uh, with Ukrainian forces, Ukrainian advances, and what have you, be it on the front line or behind the lines or whatever, that is completely under Ukrainian control. And they release these videos to uh, enforce a narrative that they are in charge of, in control of. And since Sweden has asked of Ukraine not to use CV-90s for these purposes, that is why we don't see any videos of CV-90s in combat, because Ukraine is in control and they don't, on purpose, release these videos. So what impact or potential impact will CV-90s uh, have on the war? Well, there will be a link below to a video made by SY Simulations. And that animation shows just how effective the CV-90 and its 40 mm Bofors gun is against Russian armored vehicles, including the T-72 main battle tank. Very few vehicles in the Russian arsenal are safe from the CV-90's main gun. And while the Bradley, uh, for comparison, needs to be stationary for seconds, several seconds to hunt enemy tanks, otherwise it's, it won't be able to use its uh, anti-tank guided missiles, a CV-90 can maneuver and conduct hit-and-run attacks, making it a dangerous and difficult opponent in combat. 
A CV90 is able to reposition as needed in both offense and defense and still be fully capable of being a major threat to basically everything the Russians can field in battle. Sweden and Denmark will now ensure that the CV-90s in Ukraine will be repaired with new spare parts and resupplied with ammunition. Any CV-90s lost will be replaced in time with freshly built vehicles, as it appears. And, in time, more CV-90s will reach the front line to expand the fleet already in use in the war. 50 CV-90s has helped in holding the line for six months in the north, denying Russia a major breakthrough. Expanding that number will without a doubt bring Ukraine that much closer to victory. With Sweden switching to CV-90s with a 35mm chain gun when looking to replace the vehicles delivered to Ukraine, I wonder if that means that any future vehicles built for Ukraine will also be with a 35mm gun. It also happens to be the weapon mounted on Danish CV-90, so maybe we will see that switch uh, in the, over the coming years, who knows. Or maybe will Sweden keep sending their older CV-90s with the 40mm as they replace them with vehicles armed with the 35mm? Would Denmark be okay with that solution, that you use the funds provided by Denmark to build new vehicles for Sweden so that older vehicles can be sent to Ukraine? Who knows? Whatever the case, as long as Ukraine can field CV-90s, Russia will find it increasingly difficult to subdue the fighting spirit of the Ukrainian army. Personally, I was very happy to see that Denmark wanted to help Sweden in providing spare parts, ammunition and freshly built CV-90s to Ukraine because Ukraine needs all the help it can get. And if we are to help them, they need the best military equipment uh, around. And the CV-90 is one of the top three infantry fighting vehicles in the world potentially top the very top the very best in the world and so yes we should do whatever we can to provide these vehicles for Ukraine and I am very glad that Denmark has chosen to help Sweden to accomplish this so with that said go Ukraine give them hell